Hello again, YouTubers. On Friday night, May 23rd, 2008, for those of you who may be watching this later, I went out and saw Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Now, the two friends I was with didn't really like the movie, and I've noticed that in general it's been getting a lot of bad fan reviews. I don't really see why, though. Granted, Raiders of the Lost Ark and The Last Crusade are still the best of the series, but, um, Crystal Skull isn't a bad movie. In fact, it was a damn good one. It had a very good pace to it, the action sequences were really good, and Harrison Ford still kicks ass. There was also a lot of good humor, and it was generally fucking entertaining. This is um, the point where I'm going to get into some details about the movie, so if you haven't seen it and don't want it spoiled, stop the video now. The main objection to it is the aliens at the end, when it's shown that the Crystal Skull is an alien artifact. Anyone who knows the real-life stories of the Crystal Skulls would have already known that part, but even if you didn't, when a movie begins in 1957 at Area 51, be prepared for some fucking aliens. Apparently, after the Ark of the Covenant, the voodoo, and um, the guy that reached in with his bare hands and pulled people's hearts out in the Temple of Doom, and the 700-year-old knight guarding the Holy Grail, and Sean Connery having a fatal gunshot wound healed by drinking a cup of water, you know, the damn aliens just ruined the whole realism of the series. I didn't get that at first. You know, voodoo priests, aliens, God, it's all the same shit. I didn't understand how disbelief could be suspended for God artifacts, but not for aliens. At which point, I realized that I already had the answer to um, my question there. Welcome to America, dingus. They're not suppressing belief. They actually believe that those things were plausible discoveries. I don't think it's just a coincidence that no one likes Temple of Doom either. Which I think was also a decent enough movie. The only two that anyone likes are the ones where Indiana's finding relics that would confirm biblical stories. Now, you can say in the comments section that I have shitty tastes in movies, that I'm an asshole, or that I'm gonna burn in hell. But what is it that makes God more believable than aliens? Why is it that a man who says he has a personal relationship with an invisible being that exists outside the confines of physical reality, and with that being's mortal son who happened to die 2,000 years ago, a potential presidential candidate, whereas someone who claims to have been taken by physical, biological beings who happen to be from another planet for experimental purposes, a potential psych ward candidate. Both of those ideas are equally implausible, but one man's baseless claims are treated as a respectable faith, while another's is treated as mental instability. Apparently, Indiana Jones is only good when he's finding artifacts that validate God's existence. If Spielberg goes ahead with the fifth in the series, Will it make everyone happy again if Indy is, I don't know, looking for the original stone tablets of the Ten Commandments? I'm sure Indiana Jones and the foyer of the Alabama courthouse will be a fucking smash hit. 
I mean, I could be way off base here, though. Everyone was also bitching about the scene where in Indy ends up in the middle of a nuclear testing site and is able to survive by jumping into a refrigerator. This is just complete bullshit, right? Well, with the atomic bomb blast, Indy wouldn't have been vaporized like some claim. That only occurs at ground zero of a blast. And already knowing this, they always drop the bombs off to the side during tests to measure the destruction caused by the heat and shock waves. Being in a lead-lined refrigerator, just in case you didn't notice, there was a logo that said that the fridge was lead-lined, he would have been protected from the initial radiation and heat. The only part that is really implausible is after the blast throws the fridge Indy you know, surviving the landing. But it's, it is Indiana Jones and he survives this kind of physical punishment in all of the movies. So not that big of a deal. Now since um, radiation is part of the light spectrum it's left the blast area, you know, speeding out light speed. Now, the potential health hazards that come from this are the fallout, which is the irradiated debris from the blast, which um, fallout is carried by the wind. So if he lands upwind, fallout isn't going to be a problem. Also, there's the um, fact that the surroundings will also absorb radiation and it's long-term exposure to this that causes radiation poisoning. Now, he's removed from the area relatively quickly, so this wouldn't be a problem either. I mean, really, all I know is that I watched a good movie that, after a 19-year gap, was able to keep the spirit of the previous movies alive. It was Harrison Ford on the search for a relic of supernatural origin, kicking ass and funny as hell. I mean, really, if you're a fan of the Indiana Jones franchise, there's no reason not to enjoy this movie. Peace out, everyone.